Hey guys, welcome to Swaps. I got a little bit of an impromptu project here we're working on. Our Forester has been a fairly reliable car, even though I turboed the NA motor a couple years back and it finally let go one of the factory head gaskets. We're at 162,000 miles, so we're a little past what the head gaskets normally last, and so I've just been neglecting it since we have quite a few cars. And so uh, we're gonna pull the motor, put an STI bottom end in it, try to make it work with the single overhead cam heads, and get the turbo to actually make a little more boost this go around. For the first step on this motor pull, you need to remove the charge piping, intercooler, turbo, or cold air intake, and the oil catch can and its lines or the crankcase breather. Then you need to disconnect the battery. Honestly, this should be done first, but we all forget to do it, so just try to get it done before you start messing too much with the wiring. Disconnect any aftermarket gauges. In this case, we have a wideband O2 sensor and a boost gauge. We remove the vacuum line and unplug the O2 sensor. At this point, you'll disconnect any dog bone or torque strut or lateral brace or any kind of engine mount that is accessible from above that doesn't hold the motor up. You don't want it to be falling out. You just want to disconnect what isn't necessary to have hooked up at the moment. Now we are removing the coolant overflow bottle and the lines that attach to it. Then you remove the radiator shroud and the fans. It's easier on the Subarus to actually pull the upper radiator hose, but you don't have to and you can get it to squeeze out just as it is. Remove the accessory belts. Unbolt the slave cylinder and tuck it out of the way. Disconnect any wiring to the accessories you will be removing, such as the alternator wiring and the AC clutch. Remove the alternator. Disconnect the power steering pump so it's loose for you to be able to tie up off of the motor. That way we don't have to drain the lines or bleed anything when we put it back together. Unbolt the AC compressor to set it aside as well. This way we don't have to discharge the system and refill it once we are done. Disconnect the brake booster hose. Remove the turbo blanket, the oil feed line, the oil drain line, and begin to unbolt the down pipe and the up pipe to the turbo. Unbolt the turbo from the up pipe for removal. Unbolt the down pipe from the mid pipe.
Here, I quickly removed the turbo because I realized there was nothing supporting it and it was about to fall out. Now you can remove the downpipe. Unbolt the exhaust manifolds or header and remove them. Begin to drain the coolant. Remove the upper radiator hose. Tie up the power steering pump on the frame rail, being careful not to kink any of the lines. Remove the radiator supports. Remove the starter. Disconnect the heater core lines. Disconnect the fuel lines. Helpful tip to avoid having pressure in the lines, you can remove the fuel pump relay and run the engine until it stalls out from the lack of fuel. Keep cranking it for another 5 to 10 seconds to get even more of the pressure out of the system. Remove lower radiator hose, draining the remaining coolant from the system. Remove the nuts from the bottom side of the motor mounts. Begin removing bell housing bolts. The lower studs and nut combo on the Subaru can be very tight. Remove the now drained radiator. Tie up the AC compressor out of the way. I had to reposition it using a block of wood to keep the hoses from being kinked. Chain or strap the motor in preparation for removal. With any number of miles or years of life on the vehicle, the steel dowel pins can be very stuck between the aluminum block and the aluminum transmission. Mine required a fair bit of persuasion. So that's it for part one of this series. Um, in the next part, we are going to compare the short blocks, see what parts move over from one to the other, what things we can just leave alone, see what things might even need modified to work. I think the water pump looks like it has a number of different outputs depending on the model. So we're gonna be able to get it where the single overhead cam heads from the Forester XS fit on the short block from the Forester XT and see about putting it back in in this next video. So stay tuned for that. Feel free to leave a comment down below. I read them all. I really appreciate hearing what you guys have to say. And we'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.